Okay, uh, now we are on. Yeah, sorry for the delay. I think the tutorial wasn't announced early enough. Um, sorry. So, uh, so today we're going to talk about data models, which is not something completely new to you. So, um, can can uh, one of you tell me, like, or any, like, yeah. Well, multiple of you can tell me what is a data model and what does that, uh, how do we go around and creating one? Um, just tell me your understanding so far. Um, any volunteers? Uh, all right. Um, okay. Uh, I, I don't know what to assume. Really, uh, is it that you don't know what the data model is, or is it like uh, um, you don't, just don't want to talk? <laughs> Okay. Um, all right, Hilary. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. A data model is a representation of a data structure that is required by a database. And to create it, we can start by creating a schema. And uh, that's um, from my understanding. and and then implement the, the model in our DB, DBMS. Okay, that, that's correct. Uh, and do you have an idea how to go about creating a data model for like um, for whatever like um, project you want to work on? Like, how do you start? How do you go about it? Uh, to start, you you identify the entities that you uh, the entities for the model the, the specific features uh, and then you identify the relationships between those features and their identities uh, you also uh, identify the uh, characteristics and you apply normalization create keys let's say primary or frame then i uh, have the schema and uh, implement it the db the DB Okay, that's uh, well. You you went a bit more technical, but I mean, the thing is that you have to look at the data to start with, right? So that they have, and what is the business requirement? So uh, yes, so you're you're correct, but you even gave even more details than um, than the. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically it. Or there's this this, this uh, emphasis that maybe Yavabol was trying to do in the in the start of. In, earlier in the in the introduction to the, to the challenge is that you always have to start by understanding and looking at the data at hand and also consider the business requirement like what are you trying to do with this data and what is happening so this is like the data in the for the challenge you have this week you have this traffic data that we're expecting to have more and more of um like frequently so like whatever you're going to design and whatever you're going to store it is going to depend on that um so yeah let's uh like go in but please because this is just like uh, some of these concepts already you have already know um i need you to be a little bit more interactive just um and like uh, ask questions or say anything. Um, like if you have any contribution, can can jump in or raise your hand. Anyway, so like uh, so yes, as Hilary was saying, yes, data modeling or like is the process of creating a data model, of course. Uh, so you define it by looking at uh, like the data requirement, the business that what is whatever the business requirement or the business processes that are. Um, uh, so the requirements that are needed to support the business objectives, okay? 
Um, so you, the data modeling is going from requirements to actual database to be used, and uh, you will define the data elements, the structures, and the relationships. And data modeling is not necessarily like a one-off thing you do within a business, for example. It's something that will change depending on like change, the changing requirement. La later on, uh, we will discuss this um, um, CADRO uh, layered data, mo like data modeling um, uh, approach or like framework where like it's uh, you have multiple basically data models at the same times at the same time basically yeah so the data model as was discussed is like it's the abstract organization of of the data elements and it's it's like a standard for how they are organized and how they are relate to each other and how they relate to the real world entities so you have your um like uh is the, da the data elements and their properties in in your database have to correspond to the properties of real world entities okay so i think we discussed this before like this like um conceptual logical and physical data modeling we discussed this when we talked maybe a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago when we discussed um the schema so more or less like uh, just like really overlapping with this discussion today so yeah the conceptual is the one where you are just like uh, basically planning it conceptually like relating what are your entities what are the properties maybe you're drawing the ARD and um, it's the relationship direct diagram uh, that's the conceptual part the logical part is, is when you are going to actually implement them into um, a database so using your like tables your um, your primary keys and stuff and then the physical part um, uh, this is like uh, this is going to be like accounting for like the, the actual story details um, okay so um, the types of data models we have like um, like we have, of course, the relational uh, model, which is used in the relational databases. Um, yeah, so you already know this. You have a NoSQL model, uh, the object-oriented model, the network model, and the dimensional model, which is like uh, an adaptation into like for data warehouses uh using a star schema which if you remember what the star schema was but it's basically called a dimensional model because you have fact table and dimension table so we have the fact table that's the one that changes most in a business or like those was updated a lot and then the dimension these are the more or less these are the um attributes uh, which each of them is like it is less Changes less, so it's a star. If you remember, like you can look at the shape of it. So the star is like a like a star st schema is this one, where you have a fact table and then you have dimension tables, which are just like sprouting out of it. Um. So, uh, well, the fact table changes a lot. The dimension table changes less. Um. Okay. So. Um. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Like, um, should I go on? Let's see, okay, this was an answer before. before. Um, okay, uh, so because it's not interactive, I'm going to go through and I'm going to assume that you. So I'm not asking questions, I'm going to assume that you, you are like, you know every, everything that's here or you understand everything here. Um, okay, these are like common issues when it comes to data modeling when you're like, um, when you are designing your, your, your data, data model or you're basically doing the data modeling. Part is um, like uh, identifying like when types are not identified or not identified correctly. 
and um, like when the structural meaning of the data is not standard, standardized. Um, so these are just like, uh, I'm just mentioning here some issues that can happen when these are not, these steps are not doing correctly. So if the structural meaning of the data is not standardized, then you're not going to have like, um, you cannot collaborate and share the data easily because like people don't understand what's happening or what is what is supposed to be me so this is like when it comes to that to stand standardize the data model but also like and be consistent but also like having documentation in a sense so that's like um so the me like uh, everything is like understood so even if the person who designed the data model or like who built the system leaves like everything is still understandable um also there is the thing about like um designing a data model in a sense in a way that like it's adapts but in a way that is uh flexible with uh, business rules so um we think of like an example of this um yes yeah so the question is are the models different for relational non-relational database data yeah so databases yes they are different so the data model is how you're going to structure the data right and in a data in a relational database you have um um a rectangular a tables so everything is made of tables and every row has a say that like every row had like there are fixed numbers of columns in your table so each row each record has need to have the same number of fields so the same number of properties or the same attributes and um so this is how you define your your the, the structure or like uh, the properties of of your data in um uh also in in a relation database you are not supposed to to duplicate your rows you shouldn't have completely duplicated rows um in a relation database so in in, in non-relation database the structure will be completely is will be different because these so these like requirements are not satisfied or you don't want to satisfy those so you will have like for example you can have um key value uh, structure where like uh, each record or each key have different oh okay it has a value but it can also have um, a document or have like a, a non-equal number of properties um uh so yeah so yeah the data models in short the data models are different for relational non relation databases um and you can see like here when they are listed um where was it uh yeah so the no sequel is this is non-relational data models um okay uh of course um yeah so uh so when i was just talking about when designing the data model uh you want to have like to have it um to to ensure the data quality and the consistency of the of the the data right but also like so you implement rules right in your in in the in the data model but you don't want your rules to be too strict or too like fixed in a specific for a specific situation that is going to change and the change is going to force you to like uh, make a, a big change in, a, in the whole in the whole thing um i was trying to think of an example but like um um I don't know how to come like I cannot fix a thing of like maybe okay maybe it's not really that um 
Anyway, so um, another concept, like we just talked about the star schema before and the snowflake schema, uh, like we discussed before, like it's just like, um, uh, and we discussed that these are different levels of normalization, as we talked about before, like in the design, there are this concept of normalization, which is the goal is get rid of redundancy and increase the data integrity. So this depends on how much, or like what is the requirement, what um, for, for like uh, the use case or for like uh, for the business objective. So anyway, so we define the normal forms before the level at the level of redundancy. Uh, okay, so these are like, um, um, this is um, what I was trying to say. This is relevant for relational models, right? And uh, so here, the the unnormalized form is like the relational, just the rules for a relational model, um, which is as we said before, is that each row is unique and each row has the same number of columns as each as the others. Um, so we have just a rectangular table with no duplicate row, rows. Uh, so the first normal rule, uh, um, normal form has the rules of that each record should be unique. Oh, sorry. So I was making a mistake. Um, the first, the first non-normalized, uh, uh, but the first norm is just like what the relational model is. Okay. Um, so. Um, uh, okay, so the, the second rule is each cell holds one value and uh, so on and so on and so forth. So like a second normal form, it has to be like first normal form and then it has that the primary key, um, um, like it's either one column or a composite primary key, like more than one columns and each non-key column depends, varies with them. Um, so like, uh, uh, so if there is a column that has a value that like um, maybe similar for all, for all, um, it's not allowed to have like a column that has the same value for all records, for example, um, because this is redundant and it shouldn't be like in that table, um, basically. Uh, um, and yeah, so like uh, the third uh, normal form would be like that. It's uh, um, it should be like a second normal form, and then further more than that, there is a further like uh, um, uh, requirement on the primary key table uh, the columns, um, uh, and so on. So these are like uh, as you go from like with normalization what happens to normalization is generally are going from one table this is like really not normalized and to multiple many and many many tables so a star schema is normalized to uh, uh, like extended one dimension uh okay and so sorry so just remember it's like um so it is um so when we say normalize we mean it's like it's the first normal form um so uh you can think of that like uh that um the fact table is normalized with the first normal form basically and in a snowflake schema, the dimension tables are further normalized to like one, one normal form. Um, anyway, so as you can see that this is like a the snowflake schema is like one level, like um, more normalized than the star, the star schema. So these are like, I'm just showing you this um, tables or these schemas, I'm assuming that like uh, you, um, these are just, they hold the same information, these two these two schemas here and this one. So I um, mean this uh, means I mean this graph. And uh, this is because like we went through this um, a couple of weeks ago. But if you have questions, please ask. 
I'm just saying that it's like in general, these are like, um, you can look at them. These have like much, much more tables compared to the first to the star schema. And uh, it's more normalized. So that's a normalization. As you normalize more, you get more tables. And if you denormalize, you get less tables. And that defines for you like when to use what. Um, so, like with normalization, you get less redundancy, the save space, and but you get more tables. And if you want to do some analytics, depending on your, the case, you'll need more joins. And we, as discussed before, like it's more like useful to use normalization when you are doing a write intensive. Um, is the goal of using your database is to you to do more rat intensive um work so you're going to like uh it's all all ltp um so we are recording more and when you're doing analysis and you're doing something that is more rate intensive you're going to use like you you needing like you will need to denormalize um less uh, or normalize less or denormalize whatever like the, the model Anyway, so um, uh, finally, something that we can discuss is this uh, Kedro data layer. Uh, so, but before we go into that, like, uh, is there any questions? I, because I just went through quickly. Um, okay, so Jalo is asking: Is there a relationship or difference with standardization and normalization? Yes, these are not just the two things. That's those, the two things. These are two different things. Sorry. Uh, so normalization was explained uh, right now. So it's like when in this, of course, in this context, what we're talking about. Normalization here is just the, how you're going to like basically um, um, how to describe normalization in a sense. It's uh, um, Normalization is like about reducing the redundancy as much as possible. Redundancy means that any column, think about like this in a, in a very basic sense, like very informally, if you have a column that has re repeated values, you want to kind of get rid of like this re repetition. And um, so this is what normalization does. Um, the standardization in, this, in what we discussed here is that um, uh, it, it, you have to have your data in a standard, in a standard form so that it, it's like, um, is that, sorry, the data model is standard. So in a sense that it's, um, if you have different aspects or different, if you need different models for different aspects within the same um, not the same project or the same business. You want some kind of a standard on how you 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 store, like how you define your your data model. So there are some, like the same kind of data, or this is my understanding, and maybe I might be wrong. My understanding is that is that the same kind of data is stored the same way, like um, the, in the same way, meaning the typing and the type of the data is stored in. And and uh, it's uh, like general properties, but um, of course, like if you you can have different kind of model for different um, uses, but you want to have to treat your data like um, so. If you see the same data from in different models, you still want to see them like you know this is the same one. You don't like there is no big difference or like there is no there's there some consistency basically so this is like in my understanding what is the standardization is so these are no different things um so normalization applies to relational models uh but or like also dimensional models because these are just relational models in a sense but the standardization this is a general thing um i did I answer a question Yoli? Um, okay, good. Uh, so, no, any further questions about this? 
otherwise this is going to be, I mean, And so by the end of this, you have to know, like in in a sense, how, what how how you're going to approach um, your like the challenge you have at hand. You have data, and you have a particular business objective, and you're going to store your data in in a data warehouse, basically, and and use it. So you have to do to design yourself a data model in a sense and um so you by the end of this tutorial you were like uh, i will if you have questions i was I'm, I'm trying to 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 push you to ask questions and um but uh so this is like a basis for like what you're going to do and for further tutorials this week so just like anything that comes to mind ask and like whether I managed to answer it or or not it's going to be useful to just like have all of these questions outside anyway uh so this is the last part i think um so so this is like the cattle data layer this is just like something because it's just mentioned there um like we can can discuss it um so uh it's a convention Basically, Skedro is like a, a, it's a framework for um, uh, basically for data science, like coding or project, let's say. And uh, and this they came up with this convention uh, for like layered data. Like we can all actually look at their. Um, uh, so okay, so this was the basic let me just say the basic thing and maybe we can look at the actual definition of these layers but basically these are different these layers are different data models right starting with the raw with the raw data uh, and and this is like um uh and you don't necessarily need to have all of those when you're working but the thing the thing is uh you don't want to like when you're doing like um um sorry okay maybe I'm, like I'm, I'm confusing a little, a little bit what i wanted to say is that like these are different data models and you can go through them you don't necessarily need all of them and it's just because like in um in a data science or like a machine learning project you are going to use your data in for different um you might be using your data for different uh objectives right um so uh you're starting with your, your raw data here and then you can do like some kind of just cleaning it and like um uh but leave it as is and then uh for like but of course in when when you when we work with machine learning we did some kind of machine uh, feature engineering which we created, like you can create a new, um, um, like new uh, properties or new fields or new features, basically that didn't exist before, like in your data. So you create these new ones, you transform your data. So instead of like, um, you, you you like you have this like side by side by other, by other parts. So you don't want to like uh, you're not going to erase that your raw data or like um, the intermediate uh, like level when where you have just cleaned it but uh, and there are different like different um layers that have different defi the definitions as i said before you don't necessarily have to have all of them but this is like just um let's say a modular way to have this um and of course the goal is that you don't like when you um how to say when you like um because you don't want to design uh like when you work in a business or or you don't want to design your data model every time you want to to like uh you want to have something that is like robust and reusable right all the time so with like minor changes so having different layers for different objectives it's it's is uh is useful for that because like you might not need to change all of them 
like if you need to change something, you don't need to change all of them. You just need to change one of them. So this is just something that might come across. Uh, Kedro itself is like they have a, a Python a framework. That's something that you can install and use. <clears throat> It is not. Uh, we're not necessarily using it for this for this challenge, but um, uh, it's out there basically. Anyway, so this is. I think this is all we have for today on this. Um, um, yeah. So a final thing we can say is that, um, like uh, when it comes to your for your case or when you have some kind of relational, well, not necessarily, but for the final step is that you like, uh, what are steps you're going to go through for designing um, um, so your data model is that you have to determine the purpose of your database. Um, Organize your data, you divide the data into tables and turn the data into columns. So these are things that you like, I mean, the steps are actually going through conceptual and, uh, and um, uh, starting from conceptual to the, why did I forget the second one? What was it called? Um, sorry. So it's a logical, sorry. Um, <laughs> so going through the conceptual to the logical to the physical like modeling uh, steps so these are just like steps that you can think about like um like when you are doing like conceptual and then the logical part um these are the steps that include in that more or less um entailed so like uh, which data is going to turn into columns uh, specify your primary keys Set the relationships between tables, like once you have like multiple tables, um, like normalize if you want or like uh, if you need or not. So um, of course, some of these are just like, um, we're talking more or less about the relational uh, models, not because this is what you have for, for this challenge. Um, yeah, so yeah, so that's it for, for what I have. So anything, the reminder of this tutorial will depend on your questions or like um, your contributions. So any questions? Like I, I talked about many concepts in this <laughs> very shortly. Okay, Hillary, go ahead. Yes, you mentioned that we, we, we don't need to use uh, the data models for this project. Uh, so, I mean, we have a data and we have Postgres. Uh, how do we uh, go about, you know, storing that? Should we have a schema? Yeah, so I actually, I said the opposite. You do, you do need a data model. You have the data, you have the raw data and but and you you want well we we told you to store it in a postgres um data warehouse but you have to decide how you're going to store it actually as is it's not like uh it's not relational um the the data you have the data you have right now is made of of records and each record have have a, a varying number of the records have varying numbers of fields or having varying varying number of columns if you try i think they are made of csv files right but if you try to read these csv files into tables for example using pandas you're going to get an error because like they don't have equal numbers of of fields uh, or equal number of columns in the end so you have to actually, um, not only you have to design a data model, you have to actually also like change your data or try decide how to store your data as a relational, um, in a relational database. So you have to make some choices. Um, it is not going to be, um, of course, it, I mean, there are, there are like the, the simple thing is that you're going to like, 
um, force your record your records to have the same number of of, of columns, which is like because they have like they have they share um, by by basically making them like have to have like a lot of empty like um, null values for all the fields they don't have. That's the choice. Uh, but you can make a different choice. Yeah, so so uh, did I answer the question or like can you repeat your question so that I Yes, answer? that's okay because I was trying to read the CSV. Uh, yeah, I'm getting errors. Uh, yeah, that's it, exactly. They are not equal, they are not equal length. Exactly. So the first thing you have to do, as Yavabal said earlier, is that you need to understand what is your data. So even like understand what is this like um, this extra like or this and and equal because each record has like some fixed number of fields that are like shared between all of them, but there are like some fields that are like have they have different values which are like um, because each record is a vehicle and like uh, then the vehicles are recorded like at a specific intervals. But of course, um, each vehicle is on the road for like varying times. That's why like some are recorded, like maybe as an example, are recorded like five times, let's say, but some are like on the frame and are recorded for like 100 times. So that's why like the first record will have only like the six uh, fixed uh, fields and plus five. And then um, I'm just saying um, it's not correct exactly what I'm saying, but okay, the second one will have like uh, six plus hundred. Uh, so this will re result in 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 the variation. But so you have to understand this, and then you have to decide how you're going to to store your data exactly. And this. Uh, of course, uh, because your data is going to store be stored in the data warehouse and later on transform. So you're going to use uh, EL, e, um, ETL, ELT, sorry. Um, you're going to use e, um, like extract, load, and transform. Uh, the transformation will come later after the storage. So, and um, we're going to be using DBT, we're going to talk about DBT tomorrow. Um, DBT is going to transform your data in the warehouse. So transform it in the warehouse and return like the transformation, like it's basically going to be in the warehouse itself. Anyway, um, I hope that is clear for all of you. Uh, great. Uh, Binyam is saying, um, what kind of pre-processing should we do in pre-processing node in Kedro? Can you give an example a sample pre-processing? Um, do you mean with regarding to the like to the challenges hand or just in general? Yeah, so for the challenge I um because in the challenge you're going to load your data more or less raw so you're just going to like change the structure but you're going to change the um uh, so uh just let me see like what is um so yeah basically you don't need to do pre-processing in a sense all you have to do is just um, like uh, structuring, like basically deciding what is the structure of the of your data and uh, like the types they're going to store. Like basically, you have to define the types of your data, but you don't have to do like um, deep processing in a sense. So this is like my understanding, unless I'm like um, um, Unless someone like I don't I know I don't think for this challenge you don't need to be pre-processing. So this the transformation will come later after that. Um, okay. Uh, any more questions?
so otherwise i think we are like actually yeah we have some time some time still but if there are no more questions um i think we can end um, the tutorial here i hope that you're going to go through like go through the data and try to understand like what you have